One of the most common and quite frankly frustrating challenges with getting great looking images for the web is often the sheer volume of images that we need to process results in us making some shortcuts or otherwise compromising the quality of our work. But with the WebSharp Pro panel, that's no longer necessary. We can just use the batch feature and choose the images we'd like to process. And in one quick click, take from the original high resolution layered images and output JPEGs, which are appropriate for sharing on the web, resize to our specific dimensional requirements, converted to sRGB and sharpened to look gorgeous. You can see it's already processed three versions of these images, each set to 1200 pixels wide and ready to go on the web. But of course it can do much more than that. So let's take a look at some of the more advanced capabilities of the batch processing in WebSharp Pro. The first three images here, I've done something unique that I haven't done with the other images. With these other images, they're just gonna pull from whatever options I have in the quick export settings here. For example, if I set this to square at 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, all of these would get output in that square format. But these first three are taking advantage of the crop overlay feature in the panel. I've already output these crop overlays. And when we have these in place, we can get more advanced crops in this case, I've specified an exact crop in advance that is appropriate for making a beautiful looking crop for Facebook. And this will output at 1200 by 630 pixels, regardless of whatever set up above here. And that just lets me quickly process multiple images with the exact crop and dimensions I need all at once. Or for example, in this next one, I've done something a little bit different. I've got a vertical image and I'd like to process this one into more of a landscape like this, but not just any landscape. I'm actually going to split it into six columns that are 1080 pixels wide by 1920 tall. So this is a 1080p export for Instagram to be used as a story. And you'd click through six times to look from left to right in the image. So as you're tapping on the phone, it's taking you across this image for a totally unique experience with this particular image. And then in this last example here, I've actually got a couple of crops. So you, there's no limit to how many crops you do from one image. You just create more crop overlays and you can create multiple versions of the image. So for example, I've got a Facebook crop that's going to give me this image like this, but I also have this other letterbox crop. And what's going on here, if I command or control T, you see that it's actually extended beyond the canvas boundaries. And with the letterbox flag on here, it's going to fill the top with white. It's going to fill the bottom with white. So what I'm going to get is a 1000 by 1000 pixel overall image to fit the requirements of a website or social media that needs a square image, but it's going to retain the entire image in the middle here. No cropping. I don't have to cut off the left and right sides of this image to fit a square crop. I'm simply going to fit it to the middle and leave the edges white here. It's also going to output using 100% sharpening based on this flag, which overrides whatever I have in the settings. So if my settings are normally to at you know 150% or something like that, it's going to ignore that when processing this particular overlay. It will always use 100, which lets me use different amounts of sharpening on different images or just save the sharpening I use on this image for the future so I don't have to remember what it was. It will automatically use whatever I had from this overlay in the future. So let's close this and we're ready to start processing these. But first I wanna show you a couple of quick settings that are very handy. If we go into our settings here, first under crop, if you're on crop interactively, then as a crop is needed, you'll be prompted to make that crop. For example, we've got a one by one crop here. So if I hit this image, and it doesn't have a crop overlay template telling the panel what to do, it's gonna ask how to make that square crop. Well, if I know that I just wanna use a center crop and I don't wanna be asked over and over what to do, I can set this to automatically crop as needed and now the panel is just gonna take care of that for me as it goes through the batch. Next, we have this output subfolders by size. When I check this, it's going to automatically organize my Instagram images separate from my Facebook images, separate from whatever form factors I might choose. And then lastly, in the crop overlays, I have this use overlays marked visible, even when their parent is hidden. When I opened each of these images that had an overlay, notice that the top level group was hidden, 
because I don't want to be staring at that crop overlay when I'm editing the image. I don't want to look at it here in the thumbnails or in Lightroom, but I do want to use it. And what this is telling it is that as long as that overlay itself is turned on within that hidden group, it will go ahead and process the image with that overlay. Now, if you want to override the overlays and just use the quick export, you can uncheck this and then do that. So it just gives you a lot of flexibility. But what I'm doing here is choosing to use the overlays. And I can just click batch right from here, right within the settings. It's the same as clicking batch here. Just for convenience, it lets you quickly change settings and then hit batch. Now we can choose our images and I'm going to pick these first three and maybe just a few other images to export here. So I'll just pick a few random images and these that don't have overlays will get processed according to this one by one 1200 pixel crop. And these first three are going to use the overlays that are contained within those files. And you can already see it's creating that letterbox for us. So our first 1000 by 1000 pixel export has the letterbox top and bottom ready to go. And we've got our Facebook images here for the two different crops we had specified there. Now it's beginning to make our Instagram panel and you can see it's kind of going from left to right, panning through the image. You can imagine clicking through this on a phone would let you sweep through that image and just give you a totally unique experience for that image. And it's done, but I haven't even gotten down to the last group, which is our square crop for those other images. And it looks like for these two, I probably should specify my own crop. So whether you want to use an automatic crop or not kind of depends on the particular image. And with the square crop, that's probably not the best choice here, but it just gives you a lot of flexibility. It didn't bother asking me how to crop that. I could have uh, interactively cropped that. And if we want to do that, we can just go back in here and I don't even remember which images it was, but let's just pick a few. Actually, I need to cancel. I need to change my setting. And let's go and tell it to crop interactively. And now we'll just pick a few images. And when we run this, it's going to ask me, how do you want to crop it? I can move this crop exactly where it's needed. Crop the first one. And then it's going to ask me for each of these to crop it exactly the way that I want it to be. So it's, it's not that difficult, but if you're processing hundreds or thousands of images, you really may want to go and have it automatically crop for you. And again, if you're not using a one by one crop, probably not such a big deal. You also see here, I've already processed this image. It's asking me if I want to overwrite it or if I just want to create a unique file and preserve the original. So I'll do that and we're done. Now watch these next videos or click the links below to learn more about the WebSharp Pro Panel for Photoshop.